Hey everyone, welcome to our introduction to Cursor course, where we're just going to go through how to set up our environment, as well as what Cursor does, and then we can just make a basic project to show you what Cursor really is and its implications. Alright, so as you can see here on Cursor.com, um, this tool is an AI code helper. All right. So as you can see here, it's built to make you extraordinarily productive. Cursor is the best way to code with AI. So when you think of Cursor, just think of like um, Copilot, for example. And what these models essentially do is that they use maybe Quad or GPT-4, the most recent learning language models. And then what they do is that they build an IDE for us to use using those models. And what that means is that it's just going to help us with autocorrect. And it also can help us help recommend code. And it essentially just eliminates the need for you to like switch over tabs to you know a browser if you have questions and it's just kind of built in and it's a lot easier for it to understand what your code is because it can also read your files etc and get the whole picture to make more informed decisions all right so you can go to cursor.com and watch the video to see how some of it might work but yeah it more or less just knows your code base if you allow it to and then based on that, it will, of course, give you recommendations, autocomplete, or you can just highlight code that you already have completed and ask it to, you know, reformat it or just make some changes. So maybe you want to change a variable name and then make it do something else. You can tell it to do that and it will do it for you. And then, of course, um, if you don't like the changes, you don't have to do it. It'll always ask you to confirm your changes before you get too into it. All right. And you can see here it says paralyze this function because the API runs slowly and then it'll yeah it'll give you recommendations how to make things run in parallel for example all right so to get started with this um, first thing you're gonna do is of course just click download for free um, for some reason I have a problem with it it always gets blocked by the um, pop-up blocker so just make sure you don't have that enabled if you do have one and then you can try refreshing and seeing what happens and there you go then we should be downloading cursor and then once that is in, or in downloaded, I will um, bring you guys to the actual installation window, and then we can run through the actual setup process. So once you get um, the file downloaded and then click on it in your downloads or wherever it's stored, you should be presented with a window similar to this. All right. And if not, it might just ask you if you want to, you know, use VS Code or an independent um, code editor, and then you can just select whichever one you want. But in my case, I hopefully um, will be choosing the VS Code selection. But I think they're similar in how they work regardless, so don't worry about it. But hopefully your window looks like this. All right, so you can see there's a couple options here already. So you can see there's a keyboard, and then you can see which keybinds you want to use inside of your editor. So you can use Vim, JetBrains, Emacs, Sublime, or Atom, which are just really popular text editors. And of course, I'm just going to stick with the default VS Code, because that's the one I use, and I believe it's probably the most popular of the ones. All right, and of course, you can you know specify, specify language, um, for the AI, and then um, you can compute embeddings for code base wide questions, which just means um, it'll look at your entire code base and make um, detections based off of that. You can, of course, disable that if you don't want to look at your whole code base. If you want to just look at a section, but for the time being, I'm just going to leave it enabled, and then I'm not going to add it to com command line either. So I'm just going to hit continue. All right, and then it's going to ask you if you want to use VS Code extensions. So um, that just means if you've been using VS Code for a couple years now, you'll probably have some extensions that you're fond of. So for example, I have some extensions that allow me to just do web design quicker. When I save a file, it'll automatically re-render the website, etc., etc. And I probably would want that if I want to use Cursor now as my main editor. So I would just hit Use Extensions. And then it's going to go into my VS Code files and then just find those extensions and re-download them inside of Cursor. All right. And then once that's sorted out, we should be able to um, use it as an editor. So then we can open a file, or we can start another file, and then we can go over the basics of how Cursor works, as well as um, yeah, some of the projects that we can do with it, and the settings that we can alter. So yeah, once these are um, installed, I will just cut to that, and we will be jumping into the editor. So now that the VS Codes are um, installed, it's going to ask us now for our data preferences. Um, you can select either of these. So you can help improve cursor by helping them um, by sending data to them whenever you prompt, and then you can see how well, and they can um, I guess gauge how well it's doing and make changes to their models. And of course, if you just want privacy mode, you can do that as well. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna go with help improve cursor for now. It doesn't really matter to me. I'll hit continue, and then it should ask you to 
um, sign up or log in. So um, it's going to make you, I'm pretty sure, sign up if you want to use this for very long at all because they don't want people to abuse their backend. So then you, of course, you just click log in. It should open up a browser. And then for me, I'm already logged in. So we should be good to go. And um, yeah, it'll open up uh, Internet Explorer or a Chrome, and then you just have to make an account or sign in with Google, et cetera, et cetera. But anyways, here I am. It just opened up one of my most recent projects, which was an um, augmented reality, as you can see here. So I'll probably just get rid of this for the next video and open up a new project. But this more or less just looks like VS Code, as you can see. Um, you can see that all the settings are kind of the same up at the top. And then you can see you can view, and then maybe you want to see the Explorer. Uh, maybe the appearance, uh, maybe want the primary sidebar, and you can see it looks a little different than VS Code. So you can still see there's like the Git options and the extensions options that you can see, but um, it just, yeah, they just changed the way it looks just a tiny bit. And then of course the first thing I want to do to run a command is do Control Shift P, just like in VS Code, and then we can select a different color theme for our um, our actual editor. So I'm just going to stick with dark. Or dark plus i think i'll do dark plus that's what i'm used to and there we go we just have more or less another rendition of vs code and now um i think that will do it for this video we got the project more or less set up if you don't have any um vs code files or any files on your computer that will automatically open um cursor should just ask you if you want to open up a folder and that would be how you open up a project typically all right so now that we have cursor open, um, I think we'll just stop this video for now. And then in the next one, we will go over the basics of how cursor works, as well as its settings and how to use basic generation. And then from there, we can go on to build um, a small project. And we can show you how easy it is to use and how it can really boost productivity. So yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.